What's shaking? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. I know I'm dressed like I'm about to do some slam poetry, but it is cold enough to freeze the titties off a sex doll here today, so you're gonna have to just give me a pass on that one. One of my favorite authors and a huge inspiration for my own writing is a bloke that you may have heard of named Joe. Joe Mama. <laughs> I got you. His name is Joe Hill, and he's a pretty cool dude. He is the author of such absolute slaptacular bangaroonies like Horns, Heart Shaped Box, the Lock and Key series, and many, many more. He's also the son of some guy named Stephen Stephen King. I I, I don't. I don't know, I guess his dad's written some stuff too, or something like that. It's very cool. I remember the first book I read by Joe Hill was. Horns, which is a pretty bizarre but pretty fun like mystery thriller, I guess you could call it. I would also highly recommend watching the movie adaptation that has Daniel Radcliffe in it because it's it's just fun. I mean it's it's also like <laughs> deeply disturbing and very tragic, but it's fun. So Horns was the first one I read, but I didn't really fall in love with Joe Hill's writing. You know what? Sure. The man himself as well. I, I fell in love with Joe Hill when I read uh, this one here. This is Heart Shaped Box. This book is when Joe Hill went from being an author that I enjoy to an author that is one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Great book. Really, really good. I have described Joe Hill's uh, writing style in past videos as feeling like you've sat down in a pub, you've walked in and you've sat down at the bar next to a mysterious stranger. You have a few drinks, you don't really interact with the guy, but then the stranger turns to you and offers to tell you a local legend. You let him tell you his story and it ends up being something dark, chilling, and quite mysterious. That's what Joe Hill's writing feels like to me, and I think the way that Joe does this is by keeping his writing very blunt and honest. Could also be said that a lot of it is uh, written in third person past tense, but usually what we'll read will be directly from the perspective of the characters rather than the narrator, which I know seems like conflicting things, you know, third person and a character perspective versus nar narrator perspective. But trust me, if you read some of his stuff, it'll make perfect sense. Most of his stories or his writing is usually pretty grim, cynical, maybe even nihilistic. It's rare that Joe Hill's writing will be fluffed up with pretty descriptive prose. It's usually, it's generally very to the point. I don't like mentioning Stephen King too much when I talk about Joe Hill because I really do think his writing stands completely on its own, but I do want to say that like Stevie Boy, the stories I've enjoyed most by Joe Hill have been his short stories. What I love about Joe Hill is that unlike Stephen King, he will very often explore some absolutely wacky ideas that are somehow creepy and whimsical. Sometimes it feels like the stories were co-written by Dr. Seuss and Jigsaw. Let me tell you about my favorite Joe Hill short stories. Some of them are pretty weird, but in a good way, in a good way, so just trust me. And don't worry, I won't give you any major spoilers. This is one of my favorite stories to recommend to people because it is so easy to describe. Okay, are you ready for this? Uh, imagine, imagine this. Imagine that I am Joe Hill and you are my literary agent, okay? So I walk into your office, I drop a manuscript into your lap and I say, what if the door to Narnia was discovered by a twisted psychopath instead of a group of kids? I mean, come on, that's that sounds awesome, right? If you aren't familiar with Narnia, first of all, you should be embarrassed. Secondly, it is a fantasy series called The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and it involves a group of children that climb into a wardrobe into a closet and find themselves uh, transported into a world of magic and fantasy creatures. That world is called Narnia. Now it's not actually Narnia that is in the story form, but the world is very obviously a direct reimagining of it. And unfortunately there really isn't much more I can say about it without uh, giving away some of the best mysteries of it. What I would say is this, imagine if a really bad, bad person had access to a world of fantasy creatures. A bad person with today's technology and weapons. What would they want to do with that world? How could they use that world to their benefit?
Aloft is one of those weird stories that I mentioned, but again the word whimsical comes to mind. I know that sounds weird when we're talking about a collection of horror short stories, but bear with me. The story isn't really scary. It's hard to describe. It's creepy, it's very ominous, and there is definitely a feeling of suspense throughout the entire thing, but the horror comes more from how the story is told rather than the story itself. I hope that makes sense. So the question that you will be stressing over the entire time you're reading this story is, how is he going to get out of it? I should probably explain the story, shouldn't I? So our protagonist is a young man named Aubrey, and much to Aubrey's dismay, he finds himself as part of a skydiving group. He's quite a timid, uh, you know, shy guy. He's not very adventurous or brave, so, so this is a weird situation for him. The problem is that once they jump out of the plane, they find themselves passing through some clouds, except that they don't pass through them. <laughs> Aubrey and the professional skydiver that he was strapped to find themselves hitting the cloud, solid ground. In a bizarre, gruesome, and unexplainable twist of fate, Aubrey finds himself stuck on this big floating mass of cloud. Weirder still is that the cloud seems to be sentient. It reacts to Aubrey's thoughts, it shifts around to try and suit his needs. The story ends up turning into a race against time as he starts to starve very, very high above the ground. What can he possibly do to get out of this? Things with the cloud uh, just get weirder and weirder and weirder as the story goes on, and the danger rises to a boiling point. I know a lot of people really didn't like this story, and I get it. The story is pretty weird and it's not really scary, so I can see how people would find it off-putting. But I think if you don't take it too seriously, it's pretty fun and it is creepy. I think you should uh, give it a try at least. It's a pretty quick read, especially if you wanted another reason to be scared of, <laughs> of jumping out of a plane. Now this is the most overtly political uh, short story that I've read. Well actually, it might be on the same level as the next one I'm going to mention, but I'll get to that. I know you might already be losing interest as soon as I mentioned that it's kind of political, but trust me for just a few minutes more, okay? Come on mate, don't give up on me yet. The beauty of the two political stories that I'm going to mention is that they aren't really one-sided. It's not like Joe is telling you what he thinks you should believe. I think they're both stories that can be appreciated by anyone regardless of where you land on the political spectrum. Because it feels to me like Joe Hill wrote these stories to try and give everyone a bit of perspective, maybe even himself as well. The first of those two that I'm going to mention is called You Are Released. We're introduced to a cabin full of passengers on a commercial flight. We have people of every kind, but the catch here is that the plane is flying very high above ground as World War III begins. In the escalating panic and mortal dread, people start pointing fingers and laying blame. And this is where the political aspect comes into it. The brilliant thing about this story, and it really is a beautiful story as well, the word beautiful comes to mind when I think back on it. The brilliant thing is that we have a story about a plane literally flying above a global war and most of the tension comes from what is happening inside the plane. As the story goes on, it really starts to sink in for the characters that this is the end. They are watching the, the end of the human race. And as that happens, it becomes a lot more clear to the passengers on the plane that placing blame is just... it's pointless. They're all human, they're all in the same place, they're all in the same danger. Every single one of the people inside the plane are in it together. I won't say much more about the specifics of what happens or what the characters say because I think it's just it's better appreciated for the first time on your own, but I will say that I think the story has a pretty simple theme, even if it's just a bit bleak. The extreme divisiveness that we see in the world right now, right wing versus left wing, blah blah blah, it's all ultimately meaningless when we as a species continue to destroy ourselves. I make a point on, on YouTube as a whole to not uh, really feed into the I'm left leaning or I'm right leaning labels. Because to be honest, I think it's just a BS function that people use to try and decide who they should agree with, regardless of what it is that they are agreeing or disagreeing with. I think when we start talking about being right or left, it becomes less about what we think is actually right and more about what the people on our side 
are telling us to believe. But I absolutely believe that the reason we as humans feel so split or divided right now is because the media sensationalizes every single innocuous debate just to get people angry and get them clicking on pages that are filled with ads. That is why the story You Are Released was beautiful, and that's why it resonated with me, uh, personally, anyway. I think it's a story about people being released from the grip of the systems that are constantly pushing them apart. Loaded is to this day one of the most harrowing stories that I have ever read. It's very miserable <laughs> to reflect on, but it's great, I promise. It centers a lot around uh, gun violence, and again, this is where we're getting political, and the reason I'm doing this is because it just, it just feels weird to refer to stuff like this as a, a political thing, you know, when we're talking about human lives, but the story centers quite a lot around gun violence, and I actually read it right around the time of the Parkland shooting in 2018, so it was genuinely very difficult to get through. Again, I want to make a point that Joe doesn't just take the approach of, if you like guns, you're evil. I think if anything, he actually takes quite an empathetic approach to people who truly believe that they should have guns in order to keep themselves safe. Which I think is good when it comes to difficult debates like this. If you want to change someone's mind, if you want someone to start to understand you, you first have to try and understand them. You have to hear them out, see where they're coming from, empathize with them, try to see why they believe the things that they believe, and maybe try to reach an understanding. The story loaded itself is actually quite intricate. You get a few different perspectives, but ultimately loaded follows a chain reaction of events that take place after a shooting at the local mall. Uh, also, I hope I didn't make this story sound like too political. It, it's not just like gun debate the story. That that's not <laughs> that's that's not what it actually is. The story really is quite a dramatic and nuanced piece of writing that is uh, extremely character focused. I don't want the idea of a gun debate to overshadow the fact that this is a story about very grounded and complex people. This story is bound to leave you feeling like you've just watched a car crash on your front lawn, but if you can walk away appreciating the amount of skill that it took to write, I think it's worth it. Uh, have you read any of these stories? Do you like Joe Hill? If not, why? Why? If you do like Joe Hill as much as I do, why don't you go ahead and booty bump that, <laughs> that subscribe button. Just give it one of these, little booty bump. I hope that Joe comes out with another collection of uh, horror short stories at some point in the future, although I haven't really heard anything about that, so I don't know. I'll keep my fingers crossed. If you ever hear anything about uh, Joe Hill coming out with a new collection, let me know, please. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, especially for watching uh, through the whole video. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. I do weekly videos on fantasy and horror books, so I would love it if you stuck around, and I will see you in the next one. Catch ya.